Here is a cute little frog in a floaty. If the frog moves from point A to point B, then surely, at some point, the frog must have been at all positions between A and B. That's because the position function of the frog is continuous. The frog can't just transport and skip points. If the frog goes from here to here, then at some point the frog was at all the places in between. That's just another nice result about continuous functions, and it's called the intermediate value theorem. In this lesson, we'll take a close look at the theorem, and we'll see a way that it's often applied. So here's the theorem, the intermediate value theorem, also often called the IVT for short. Suppose that F is continuous on the closed interval from A to B, and let N just be any number between F of A and F of B, where F of A is not equal to F of B, so the starting value is different from the ending value. Then there must exist a number C in the open interval from A to B, such that f of c is equal to n. There must be some point in between the start and the end where the function takes on this value n. Take note of how this number n is between f of a and f of b. So it's just some number between the start and the end point. The function must take on any value that is between the starting and the ending point. There must be some point where the function takes on that value. A continuous function on a closed interval takes on all of its intermediate values at some point. That's the theorem. Proving the IVT is outside of the scope of a Calculus 1 course, but I hope you'll agree it's plausible. Here are a couple pictures from Stewart's Calculus showing the theorem in action. We've got this continuous function, f of x, from a to b. And for any number, n, between f of a and f of b, the function must take on that number, a value of n, at some point c in the interval. At this point c, the function takes on the value of n. The intermediate value theorem guarantees there has to be at least one number c in the interval where this happens. Now, it could also happen that this occurs multiple times. In this example, we have a continuous function f of x. Here's a number n that's between the starting value f of a and the ending value f of b and our function f of x happens to take on the value n three times but again the ivt just guarantees that it would happen once at least once. Of course, like we talked about with our teleporting frog, this theorem does not apply to discontinuous functions. Here I've got a blue function f from a to b. However, it's not continuous, so the theorem doesn't apply. And we can see that this value n here, which is between the starting value, f of a, and the ending value, f of b, this value n is not taken on by the function at any point in the interval. It gets really close to n, but then it jumps up here, skips right over n. It also skips over all these other values in here. So clearly, the theorem does not apply to discontinuous functions. If a function is not continuous on a closed interval, then maybe it will take on any particular value between the starting and ending points, but also maybe not. Now, just how useful is this theorem? Well, here's one of the great applications of it. The IVT can be used to locate roots of an equation. Here's an example. Is there a root of x to the 4 plus x minus 3 equals 0 on the open interval from 1 to 2? Is there any value of x on this interval that's going to satisfy this equation. We can answer this question using the intermediate value theorem, but in order to draw any conclusions, we of course have to verify that the IVT applies on this interval. This question happens to ask about an open interval, but remember, for the intermediate value theorem to apply, we need our function to be continuous on a closed interval. So we want to be thinking about the closed interval from one to two. And indeed, the function x to the 4 plus x minus 3 is continuous on the closed interval from 1 to 2. It's a polynomial, and polynomials are continuous everywhere. So the intermediate value theorem does apply. Any number between f of 1 and f of 2 must be taken on by the function at some point in the interval. So the only question that remains is 
is zero a number between f of 1 and f of 2? If so, the function must pass it at some point. So we look at f of 1, the starting value. Plugging 1 in, we find that f of 1 is negative 1. Then we look at the ending value, f of 2, and we find that it's equal to 15. So it started negative, it ended positive. Since the intermediate value theorem applies, the function must have passed 0 at some point in the interval. So we found that f of 1, the starting value, was less than 0, which was less than the ending value, f of 2. So by the intermediate value theorem, there is a point c in this closed interval, so that f of c is equal to 0. I want to point out there's nothing special about 0 here in the context of the intermediate value theorem. It's just that we wanted this function to equal zero. So that's why we're concerned with zero. However, the function must have also passed through one, for example, at some point on the interval because it started at negative one and ended at 15. One is between those values. So at some point, the function took on a value of one. At some point, it took on a value of 12, 13, and so on. The IVT is what we call an existence theorem. It simply guarantees that something exists. It doesn't tell us what it is or how to find it. However, by repeated uses of the intermediate value theorem, we can get a more accurate sense of where the root or solution might be located. We were looking at the closed interval from one to two, but we could also shrink the interval a little bit and think about the interval from 1.1 to 1.9. The function is also continuous on this closed closed interval. And we find that the starting value on this interval is negative, the ending value is positive. So again, there must be a point C in this interval such that f of c is equal to zero. So we have narrowed our range in looking for this root. Now, it could be that there are multiple roots, but for sure there has to be at least one on this closed interval. We could proceed in this way continually guessing and checking and shrinking the interval to try to get a closer and closer sense of exactly what the root is. If we were to shrink our interval more and say we try looking at the closed interval from 1.5 to 1.6, f is actually positive at both of these endpoints. So the intermediate value theorem would not guarantee us any roots on this closed interval. So that's a look at the intermediate value theorem and how it's used. Once more, what it says is that if a function is continuous on a closed interval from A to B, then at some point it must take on all of its intermediate values between F of A and F of B. I'll leave a link in the description to some other exercises where we practice using this theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check out my Calculus One playlist for more. Link in the description. Thanks for watching. Where's the law? I'm regular, I'm regular, I'm integrity, I'm